Okay, hey everybody, uh, thanks for joining here this week. Just back in the office here, so I'll go ahead and get started. And I've got some news to cover here. What I'm going to do is combine these together, and then we'll dive into some charts, as we always do. Okay, hang on a second. There we go. All right, Um. so let me just pull up the chat here. I've got this. Uh, good morning. Hey, Brandon. And uh, so let's just dive into it, and then we'll get into the charts, as I mentioned, uh, some interesting things going on. And the news we've got, Jamie Dimon saying, U.S. banking turmoil not over, seeing long-term repercussions and more contagion potentially. I kind of have to give everything he says, take it with a grain of salt, because uh, he typically says one thing and then find out Goldman, um, or J.P. Morgan rather, is doing uh, the exact opposite. So, you know, uh, it's a bank, it's a business, they... Uh, you know, he's got a track record of doing that. So we'll see, but it certainly makes sense. Crisis not over. And, um, you know, the repercussions for years to come. Always just kind of wondering, though, what's his end game? What's he getting toward? And how can uh, they, JP Morgan position themselves in the middle of that? And um, so we'll keep an eye out, but uh, certainly that would make sense. And it, in the end, it's a case, it's the optimal case use for Bitcoin, which in the original white paper, Satoshi was saying in the 2008-2009 crisis that uh, this is why Bitcoin was created. So there's a lot to unpack here, and it's um, I think it's too big for any one person or group to be obviously controlling this. This is a very fluid uh, situation, environment uh, over the last few years, starting with COVID, of course, and uh, you know, and all of the after the last global or the financial crisis of 2008 a lot of this is, has just been still percolating without going into a lot of detail on that you know um but um it what's important is where we are now market odds of recession have increased diamond wrote and while it's nothing like 2008 it's a little bit like 2008 it's not exactly the same uh not clear when the crisis will end you know certainly printing all that money since the last global financial crisis and then with covid that um you know it's it's a lot of liquidity to unwind and may not be possible so you know it certainly clearly is a global financial crisis no news there so uh what does it mean for us that's the question provoked a lot of jitters in the market will clearly cause some tightening of financial conditions as banks and other lenders and lenders become more conservative you know and um what did they do in the last financial crisis? You know, the banks bought long-term treasuries because the interest rates were were lower. And um, <clears throat> with the Fed raising interest rates, really devalued and made those long-term treasuries worthless, which is both the cause and effect of the banking crisis. Uh, the effect of the last one and the cause of the current one. And so what banks have been doing lately is buying short-term treasuries and there's no end of evidence that's a good move either and we won't get into yields and all how all that relationship works but it's not good and um you know maybe the great reset scenario does play out and the us just says well screw it you guys can have all your debt we're gonna move all over to bitcoin i don't know it's kind of fun to put on your tin hat conspiracy theories sometimes what if the ceia is satoshi and this was all planned out and we unload all of our debt to the rest of the world lose the dollar as a reserve currency fine but if it's going to go to bitcoin anyway uh then we are well actually i'm going to pull calls in that exact argument because the us is uh selling allegedly selling all of their bitcoin in four tranches and while it won't immediately affect price because they're doing it a little bit at a time that pokes hole in the argument for bitcoin and it strengthens the argument for the central bank digital currency and the new fed coin and i think we really haven't seen all of the fallout from that so what do we always say show me the chart i'll tell you the news we will follow what we see in the charts mostly what i'm using the news and i think this is important for most people because when you're a new investor the mind seeks to understand so you turn to the news for direction and what to do i don't do that i use the news as a general overall market thesis on where things are and uh, as a big picture kind of put the frame around 
what's inside of the frame. That's a good analogy. Otherwise, it's just a lot of information. Well, if you put the frame around it, all right, global financial crisis, banks are failing, Fed dollar, Bitcoin, all of these things. All right, these are the possibilities. And uh, of course, all the other things that have happened. What's inside of the frame is what we want to focus on. So just keep that in mind. If you are still watching CNBC and seeing a story running over to buy some of whatever, don't, don't do that. The traders pay for news feeds, and we used to do it when we were day trading across the river 20 years ago. Uh, we would hit the wires, the AP, before it would hit the CNBCs, et cetera, and uh, we'd be positioned and selling on the news. We called it the Joe Kernan effect. Uh, Joe would come on and say, after the break, we're going to talk about a biotech company that is blah, blah, X, Y, Z, and everyone would jump online, and someone in the room would figure out what company he's talking about. We'd buy up a bunch of it, and then Joe would come on and start talking about that company, and we'd be selling on the pump because retail investors, Bob and Mary Smith from Midwest Idaho would run to their computer and say, oh, Bob, we should buy some of that. That sounds like, a, you know what I'm saying? So just understand the, how the, the flow of information is so much faster now. And I assume most of you understand that uh, many of you do, but, but that is important and worth re mentioning because even now, especially now also like that TV show billions where, he, uh, Bobby Axelrod says to his, his uh, people when they have an idea, he says, are you certain? And the code word for I have inside information is I am not uncertain. Okay. All of, you know, there's always a certain basis, in fact, on these, some embellishment for TV, of course, but you get the idea. All right. Back to news. <laughs> Just wanted to sidebar there because I think it's important to keep that in mind. The risks that led to the current crisis were hiding in plain sight, Diamond wrote, citing interest rate exposure and level of uninsured deposits. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I'm not going to go into another rabbit hole, but, um, you know, well, I will. So, so all of this banking crisis somewhat caused by rising interest rates. What's the end game? And could these big banks be the sacrificial lamb that leads the Fed coin to be Forced might be a strong word, but uh, yeah, forced upon us, you know, and basically justification for creating a, a CBDC and Fed coin. So they come in like the knight in shining armor on the white horse to save the day with their, it's really a Trojan horse. And then they push the CBDCs and the Fed coin, which, you know, will be tracked. Everything you spend will be tracked. And uh, I mean, in some ways, it'd be better. You don't have to kind of get your bookkeeper to allocate everything it's already but then again everything will be tracked so oh, we don't really know what that means yet it's a it's a, it's a dangerous uh, path to go down he downplayed similarities to the global financial crisis while 2008 crash hit large banks mortgage lenders and insurers with global interactions this current banking crisis involves far fewer financial players and fewer issues okay so he's downplaying it. Interesting. And uh, he, after taking the helm, JP Morgan, he presided over the banking crisis era acquisition of troubled investment bank, Bear Stearns. Yeah, you see that? I mean, they come in and pick up the pieces. And um, and then WAMU, which was the largest failure in U.S. history. It's always an end game and, a, and an upside with Jamie. So... Uh, you know, because he's also in the past said Bitcoin is bad, and then they they are buying it. At any rate, so Diamond again played a central role, helping to arrange thirty billion lifeline for First Republic. Don't really care about that. Skimming this, and came to five billion each. Smart Stanley, Goldman Sachs, two and a half billion. Okay, so we're I don't want to go too far into this. What's the uh, TLDR on this? Uh, oh wow, Branson's. Virgin Orbit files for bankruptcy. That's not great. Sorry to hear that. Uh, got to know Richard a little bit. Spent five days on Necker Island with him and uh, 19 other entrepreneurs. We raised about $440,000 for Virgin Unite. Uh, and uh, he's a good guy. I uh, would like to see him win. 
All right. More on Jamie Dimon says bank of turmoil. We've already covered this. Just looking for anything new, nothing new there. We've got some um, same article here. We've got, let's see, Bitcoin best quarter in two years beats all major indexes in Q1. Um, dangerous to, to buy into that. Although our monthly charts do show we head higher, but you know, there's a point where the sellers are exhausted and the bears are fat and happy because they made a ton of money on the way down. Make no mistake. And the Wyckoff accumulation pattern starts again. They are accumulating. Doesn't mean we're at the bottom. So this is somewhat misleading. Cool graphic, though. You know, I might, I'd love to have, I'd like to have that as a painting on the wall. Anyone wants my birthdays in November? If you want to, if you're an artist, uh, I might, I'm going to leave that up. Maybe I can find it. That's pretty cool. Maybe I'll send one to Mike. All right. Uh, Bitcoin investors show my business partner, Mike Newton, for those of you that don't know. Biz, uh, Bitcoin investors show a spike in bullish sentiment. Sure. And, uh, you know, the fear and greed index was bouncing nicely last time I looked. Almost too much of a recovery. So let's pull that up. Fear and greed index in crypto. We'll go over to alternative.me. And I'll pull that up on another browser here. Uh, let's see. Bullish comments emerged. Yeah. So this is uh, this is um, I believe it's sentiment. Yeah. Sentiment is a uh, play on words on sentiment, and bullish comments emerging. These spikes in bullishness, though, are usually followed by uh, a drop in the you know anything to the extreme. Generally will generally will revert, but look at the fear and greed index. We're up to 62 now, getting into the greed zone. And um nothing, no exact meaning from that, but worth noting. And uh Bitcoin over 28k. I still think we pushed to 30k, maybe 32k, and then that'll be a heavier resistance. And uh, but uh, I think in the short term, you know, either we have like a short term pump and roll over, but I think we're rolling over here. Let's see, just dissecting the irrelevant news. Uh, nobody will get rich investing in Bitcoin ever again. All right, so you want to weigh all the news, even the uh, fringe idiots that um, uh, are just trying to get attention. I, I don't mean to, you know, look, it's worth paying attention. Sometimes uh, the idiots are idiot savants and they find something like the guy that first pointed out the Wyckoff patterns last year. He has a channel called uh, Uncomplicated and it has to do with gardening and all kinds of things. And this this uh, sort of, you know, uh, he's rock climber, guitarist, uh, hippie type, nice channel. But he's the one who sort of opened up and said, hey, this looks like a Wyckoff pattern. And then every, he was right. So anyway. Not trying to be mean toward anybody here. Uh, horizontal level show potential for bullish trend. We'll take a look at that. I don't want to look at too much news. We'll sort of skim this. Uh, yeah. So is this Samuel edit? And I have no idea who this is. So during this, people are always trying to make a name for themselves, and sometimes to do that, they will throw out, you know, uh, outlandish claims. And so I'm not going to really read that. Horizontal levels show potential for bullish trend. You know what? I trust my own TA. We'll look at that. I, I think this, um, we're in an upward trending channel here. We just draw it like this way. But uh, it's a bit confusing. So let's uh, get on with it to our own charts. Let's see. Bitcoin drops at 27.5. Yeah, the Dogecoin news. Um, I don't know. I, I was busy yesterday. And uh, so, um, yeah, Bitcoin needs a catalyst to break 30,000. Dogecoin, I, I can't imagine that'll become the new logo. That was probably Elon messing around because there's a tweet out there where uh, there's no date on it, where he was talking to somebody on the board and he said, basically, you know, wouldn't it be funny to buy Twitter? The other guy said, buy Twitter and change the bird to Doge. And Elon said, that would be sick. And uh, so he made that a reality. Is that going to be permanent? I doubt it. But it may be foretelling because I've been saying for a while, maybe Dogecoin becomes the payment rails for PayPal. I'm sorry, PayPal, uh, Twitter. <clears throat> and um, I don't want to spend time on uh, Dogecoin. We'll, we'll get into the charts here. We talked about that and just want to touch on this. Branson Orbit. What is Orbit? Is that, I didn't know there was Virgin Orbit, says uh, chapter 11. So why is that? Is that symbolic of a broader 
travel industry problem. As long as he doesn't uh, bankrupt Virgin Galactic, because uh, I'm going to space, damn it. And uh, a friend of mine bought a ticket on that 2012 $250,000 ticket. His wife said, you can you can pay for it if you pay for it and without except out of savings. So he threw a seminar and kind of like John Lennon. John Lennon used to say, I'm going to go write myself a swimming pool or write a song to pay for it. But uh, at some point, I would like to go. Anyway, uh, some comments coming in and then we will come back to the charts here. Let me make this a little bit bigger. I'm on my uh third monitor here ks says the big question is what else jpm goldman sachs for buying in addition to treasuries long perceived as lowest risk since they are guaranteed by u.s government treasury and they can just print more well guaranteed meaning what uh so i don't know if i trust that guarantee um you know they're treasuries but uh you know can the u.s go bankrupt we are living in unprecedented times you guys they the big five knew what was going to happen to values for those long-term bond values and uh, of those long-term bond U.S. debt portfolios. So it would be interesting to see where their hedging bets are, gold, silver, BTC, quietly. Yeah. I mean, what if part of the, you know, look, the, if you ever saw the game War Games, I'm sorry, the movie War Games, it was like in the 1980s, but certainly this stuff happens and they sit around and war game back and forth. A lot of our tax dollars go toward that, computer simulations, et cetera. But what if the best way to weaken our allies like China were to default on all the debt that, China owns doesn't seem like a particularly good strategy, um, but you know, uh, who knows? And let's see, uh, we'll see, I guess. But yeah, especially Bitcoin. Like, I there's a map somewhere I shared in Active Trader of the largest holders of Bitcoin, and it's Russia, China, and the United States. Now, allegedly. The United States is selling all of their Bitcoin in four tranches. Now, just uh, to talk about that, I've had discussions with Mike, um, who's very smart with all of this. And I said, Mike, is this, you know, it's going to be done over on the OTC desk. So it's not going to be, it's not going to affect price. And they're selling something like 150 Bitcoin a day. And it's being uh, absolved or absorbed rather by the uh, market. And so, he doesn't believe that's going to impact price, but I want to make sure I don't lose my thought there. Well, the thought is, but it's still not necessarily good. Why are they selling other Bitcoin? If there's even a possibility that Bitcoin becomes a future world reserve currency, we would not be selling it. Um, so it's not a it's not a bullish case scenario, unfortunately. Mm, yeah, it's worth pondering. Let's see. Uh, let's see. David says it was their rocket to co rocket company. Oh, I see. The rocket company to compete with Musk. Uh, Orbit, Virgin Orbit was, David? Um, I thought that was Virgin Galactic, but that's the little plane thingy they fly up. Yeah. Well, that's cool. We don't need another rocket company. And, uh, you know, and um, Bezos has one. So anyway, moving on, KS says Elon's roots are in payment systems, PayPal, right? And, uh, you know, looking back, I wish I'd gone into computer science because uh, and learn how to code because, you know, it's damn hard to find a good coder that you can trust. I've had a lot of good ideas. I've made a lot of money selling software, but it was always hardest finding quality coders. And I have a SaaS company that still haven't launched because the coding team I hired out of Bangalore was... Um, uh putting questionable things in in the order payment page a lot of bugs and things and just you know uh anyway i digress but uh, elon got it right co-opting doge as payment rails he has good influence on for twitter is not out of the realm of possibility for who knows yeah you know what Cass, you're right i think though that would be a short-term gap before they create their own blockchain payment system because why that increases the value of twitter uh the value of twitter as a resale depending on what where he sees the value i mean that's always the question he doesn't need to buy it build it and sell it i think it's he has bigger plans and you use it as a platform for some kind but um and that would certainly make sense you know twitter advertising is not all it could be but they 
And I've tweeted that to Elon, not that he's responded, but that's that's what they need is they need to fix their advertising platform. Why is Google such a big company? Best advertising platform and Facebook. So if he can if he could buy and sell uh, advertising at cost for the boring company, for Tesla, for uh, all of his companies, the AI company, OpenAI, that would make sense. Own your own advertising platform. But um, if they had their own payment rail later than and it's proprietary down the road, so short term, maybe it's Doge. Uh, Long term, Twitter pay. You heard it here first. I predict Twitter pay will be a thing on the blockchain. Twitter coin. We'll see. All right. Uh, David says they all had overhead but weren't launching rockets. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. I didn't have time to pitch Branson on my space hotel idea. And um, it's viable. I have one. If anyone has a billion dollars they want to lend me, I will share my idea. I almost shot a video in my garage in Florida, but I thought he, I, I should have probably should have done that. It's viable. Bigelow has his Bigelow's doing his own version, but he's basically inflating bags in space and they are made out of textiles. It's uh, uh, it, they look ridiculous. Mine would be a um, all glass, very attractive thing floating around in space. Big problem is all that space junk we have flying around at 80, uh, 20,000 miles per hour and the uh, radiation from the sun. But it's in the magnetosphere, so it would be a problem. You see, you guys thought I was kidding. I've, I've got a, I've got a plan. Uh, all right, one day, Virgin Orbit could just be winding down one of the 100 or so companies that Branson owns. It could be cutting losses, liabilities, could be on par for the course, claiming losses and refocusing elsewhere. Yeah, that would make sense. That would make sense. So, um, yeah. I'll, I'll, if you guys want to hear a funny Branson story, I'll tell you at the end today. Let me know. Stick around to the end. Uh, very funny story. All right. What do we see here? Show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Basically, this says it all, you guys. Um, we're, we should be heading down here. We have a bearish ERI. Uh, we are we are tweaking the ERI a little bit because sometimes the arrow doesn't print. That's why the ERI oscillator here is worth. You need to watch for that too. We're going to fix that. And um, the reason for that is, yeah, uh, without going too far into the proprietary na nature of the ERI, because it only got up here to the 91 percentile. And um, I have my arrows turned off for less ideal. We're going to we're going to simplify the ERI because the confirmation on this is the trend strength indicator. So here's some nuances for you. And so if you get an ERI on the oscillator which is if you're new here is this vertical red line here and it confirms with a TSI turning from green to red and confirming below the 80 line. We had that yesterday. Now it's continuing. I think we get a little lower here, you guys. So, and the other nuance here that I've been watching is when you see this kind of thing, this is, whoops, is uh, a further indication it's it's weakening. So um, my prediction here is we go lower. This pump here, we don't, it's not to be trusted. ETH is pumping, Bitcoin, not really so much. But look, I've had this drawn here for, at least four or five days, maybe a week. And uh, so we have, it's it's overbought. We have a red signal line. We have a red TSI downward sloping. Uh, the trend indicator has stopped printing. It's still green for now, but that just means no trend. I think we're coming lower, you guys. And you know where? I think we come down around 25.5, right? Why there? Because that was strong support right back in, sorry, resistance back in here. When in doubt, zoom out. Let me turn off this ERI for a little bit. Some good old fashioned TA. Rejected here, 25,300. Remember that level? 25,300 was that magic number recently right in here. Okay. Because it was that top rejection back in here. So it's still significant. And I'm going to, before I zoom in on that, let's take a look at the volume weighted average price. And because this is the fixed range volume profile, this is sort of arbitrary art and science, but uh, where does that come in? 
Yeah, I I mean, I don't know. This is relevant here. We have this would indicate this was a strong area. We did come right down and test that. That was also a CME gap there. And then we had all this time down in this level. Does that get retested? I don't I don't think so, but I don't know. It's good to know where these levels are. We can also look at one other thing on our shorter term time frame. But if I want to do a more recent, uh, this is not one where you can exactly know where to draw it. 23,000, seeing a lot of activity there. So these do act as magnets. But I think what I... Well, what I'm more looking for is this rising trend line support. So where could we see this push to? I think this is reasonable to draw that right to 24,000. If we extend that out, depending on how long this takes. But in the short term, I think right down to 25,300. That's where I think we go. And that would be a buy zone. So what, um, what we are looking for, and I want everyone to come away with this, the next cycle will be an ideal, in my opinion, ideal time to buy. What I would be looking for, will be looking for and sharing in detail with you guys an active trader is, as we know, the ERI, TSI, signal, and bell. When those align, that's our strongest signal. And uh, and so when we come down, I want to see another cycle reset, as it were, whereas specifically we have the trend strength indicator coming down in here. You see this long time that it spent it was about a week or so down below this area and then boom it shot up it went red to green and it almost broke that 20 line right away okay so when we start seeing that eri with the green arrow tsi signal goes green and we get the bell and in these scenarios this is educational purposes only not financial advice it is prudent to leg into your positions not go all in and wait the the reason these indicators are so powerful is there's no all-in-one indicator that says clearly buy sell this is probability and hedge fund managers are risk fund managers risk managers you know they they work on probability so the eri hence the name the early reversal indicator and I had a great uh, coaching session with Rick here the other day talking about these things. Legging into, so we see this. Now, where, where was an even earlier signal? For those of you that uh, are using, let me just pull that up here, your uh, trend, uh, sorry, your trading success worksheets. Let me get that over so this all is cohesive. We have two versions of this, by the way. We have a Moonstream one and one for Crypto Mastery, essentially the same. Uh, if you guys don't have this, let me know and I'll get that to you. So is this what you want to follow? Is the ERI showing a green up arrow? Multiple green arrows in a row better. Here's the example. Check. And is the TSI green and above the 20 line? Here's two example. No, if it turns green is, is good, but it's not confirmation. This is a no. This is a yes, where it goes above that uh, 20 line. Check. Has the signal line. Are we missing an image there? Oh, this is the signal line. Has the signal line turned from red to green? Check. So here we go. ERI TSI signal. So now we have three out of 19 potential. This is designed to give you more confidence. Long trades is the trend indicator showing a bell. Bell is your buy signal. This is the crypto mastery class. So we're going to really zero in on the signals and the indicators. Okay. So now you've got all four ERI TSI signal and bell. What I'm suggesting to you is to start legging into these when you start gaining confirmations instead of going all in and all out. So here, obviously, hindsight, 2020. But what I'm looking for and waiting for is getting in early. Now, what I uh, was looking at, though, let me just open this up. Even before our ERI, though, see, I want you guys... Looking for clues always. What do we have here? Anybody? Uh, I see a bunch of comments coming in. We'll get to those. I, I want to zero in on this right now. So bullish engulfing. Good job, Brandon. Bullish engulfing candle and engulfing what? We have a nice hammer. Good. A plus, Brandon. Good job. And we have a hammer here right at a trend line support followed by a bullish engulfing candle. Back to our checklist. 
what else? So more of these you can check off. This is your, this should be your guideline, you guys. Bullish engulfing candle, boom. All right, what else do we have? Is candle body at support? Could be EMA or it could be a trend line. Before I check that, I'll ask you guys. Do we have two candles at support? And I'll zoom out. Sometimes you guys say, I don't know why that line is there. Um, okay, well, in all fairness, this wasn't a, anything yet. I drew this after we bottomed here, so I can't count that. You know, again, hindsight's 2020. This became the trend line once this became a bottom. But nevertheless, it was a hammer and a bullish engulfing. There might be support in there if we zero out, go out left, but let's not do maybes and mites. All right. So, I mean, in retrospect, but it, here's the thing. If we come down to this trend line again and bounce, then we can check this off. Trend line support. We won't do it for this trade. Right now, I'm analyzing this trade right here, and I want to make sure you guys just know what I'm looking at there. Just right in here. Beautiful time to start legging into that trade. So if you're using your dollar cost average worksheet and you wanted to allocate, let's say, 10K to Bitcoin, you could say, well, I have a bullish engulfing and an ERI. Maybe you went in, maybe you went in in five tranches, $2,000 in the bullish engulfing. ERI pushed up another 2,000. Then you had almost a rocket there on that 50 day moving average. But what else did we have right here? So as you increase confidence, it's kind of like, and I'm not a gambler, but it's kind of like when you're playing blackjack or Texas Hold'em and you start getting the cards you want, you're, you're, you're doubling down, increasing in the bet because you're increasing the odds. So what do we have here? So at this point, we have the TSI as well. So you might have gone 2,000, 2,000, even, even maybe, yeah, it hadn't confirmed yet. So this hadn't quite confirmed. And then the next daily candle, Boom, shot way up, another 2,000. So now you're 6,000 in the trade, potentially. At the same time, though, you had the signal that also went there. So maybe that was a double-double. So 2,000 and 2,000, more probability. This is just an example of how I would ideally play this. And then the next day we had a key. So pulled back a bit, pulled back on that. And then we had the bell. So then I would have gone in potentially gone in with the remaining 2000 and then boom we had another bullish engulfing candle this is the this is an excellent trade setup to study in fact let me do this let me screenshot that and just share that with you guys just textbook how good this is you know and even extending it back out it broke below the 50 period moving average Dropped all the way down here, put in a doji, bullish engulfing, ERI, and then the rest of our signal started to fire. What else could we layer on here, by the way? Yeah, I mean, and look at that too. The Bollinger Band, if you guys are, so there, you guys are using the Bollinger Band too, the modified Bollinger Band. So this came right up and touched that um, modified Bollinger Band here too. I mean, if you saw it come up, I do recommend taking some profits. If it ever gets above, the Bollinger Band, again, our modified three bolt, three standard deviation Bollinger Band, came back down. You could buy back here. You know, it's good to look back, and this is also how you can learn. Learn from your mistakes, but also learn from what you missed and could have won on. Okay, so, you know, if you played this perfectly, if you had sold some, maybe half the position at breaking out above that Bollinger Band and then bought it back on the bullish engulfing, shot up again, didn't quite touch the Bollinger Band here, bullish engulfing, kind of sideways, sideways, sideways. Then we start drawing this pattern. We had a bearish ERI here. Did it confirm on the TSI? It didn't confirm on the TSI until when? Today, it's, it's you know, this could go, now watch the close today. Because while this is breaking down, I would imagine with this kind of slope and velocity, this is heading lower. It is going to confirm. And actually, we confirmed yesterday right there. So you utilize this. Open these full screen to get the full picture, by the way. And then you can you, you'll, you can put them down below for at a glance. I never want to assume you guys understand what the way I use these or that we use these. But uh, certainly this pattern here is looking uh, like it's rolling over and we have bearish signals. But um, 
So had you gone in in at the right time and you took profits at the ideal time, let's just see where that could have been. You know, we got up here in this range, in this flattening area, anywhere along here could have been a good profit target uh, potential. Now, there's one thing, though, that I'm looking at that has that could that could override everything I just said. And uh, and this is why trading is never easy. So the bullish case, anybody? Yep, Brandon again, Brandon for the win. A plus, Bollinger Bands are tightening and we have a support on the upper trending 21 day EMA. These EMAs, even though lagging indicators, they do, they can and do provide uh, support, especially that 50, 50 day. So, you know, um, that is the big caveat here. But, you know, that's why we use stop losses and we we go with what we see. So either way, I wouldn't be necessarily buying here. If you were to buy here, I, I would wait. because If this was bullish engulfing candle, I'd say, all right. You know, and at one point it was, but it's selling off. You know, what I would recommend, I'm out of the market. I was going to go in and buy half uh, ETH on my ERA, IRA. <laughs> so all these, all these monikers and acronyms. So, so just just the nuances of this, you know, our indicators are great, but you have to keep in mind the overall market, again, the frame around the trade, and that's a lot of the in news. Some of it's the news, I won't say, you know, but but show me the news, show me the charts, I'll tell you the news. So we are consolidating here. And uh, and so it's possible it just keeps going sideways and we get that cycle down on the uh, ERI and TSI. But either way, this is inconclusive. I wouldn't be buying anything at this point. If we come and close here above this point and it's bullish engulfing, as the Bollinger Band tightens, watch it over the next few days, then I would chance a trade. And I'd recommend at least a paper trade. This is how you learn to develop your own kind of spidey sense. And uh, I'm just going to do the brush because it's easier, but you know, then we could see something like that. That's a very awkward looking arrow there. All right, we won't do that. But um, coming down in this range, we could certainly see something like this. There we go. And, and that's what I'm waiting for is a pullback to support. So let's say it comes down here that 21 day in the next day or two, Bollinger Bands tighten, and then we could certainly see something like this. I still think 30,000 is going to give us some trouble. To, to reiterate, and we'll talk more about this in Active Trader tomorrow. Uh, if you're not an Active Trader already, you can find out more at moonstream.io slash m3. And uh, we dive deeper into all this. So with that is what I'm waiting for. And the uh, big opportunity is if, see, let me just clarify this. I do think we push to 48K to 52K soon. Maybe not this month, May, June. And for that, I think we need to see this TSI hit another cycle reset, calm down and see a pattern like that. That's what I think. So right now we're just sort of waiting and watching. There might be some short-term pump opportunities, and but keep in mind, probably a good sell zone is 30k. Those round numbers, those psychological numbers, usually are profit-taking levels. We're still overbought up here. Okay, so if we come down and we see a bounce, I still think we, you know, these Bollinger bands sometimes they push up higher, but it can be faked out. So we're sort of being conclusive right now. I wouldn't be shorting. I wouldn't be buying just yet. Fair enough. All right, let me get to some comments and, and we'll continue. Any questions on that? All right, KS says Twitter could easily become a holding company for social crypto exchange related companies. DeFi, that's a lot. Go read KS's comments here, you guys. Um, I'll summarize it. Um, yeah, that's a lot to unpack. Good content, but um. Let, let me stick with the quick ones here. Brandon said, uh, could this BTC pullback be a loss in Bitcoin dominance? We'll look at that. And uh, that's something we were starting to see a push higher on Bitcoin dominance, but kind of pushing to a resistance area. And ETH needed needs to kind of recover because ETH is losing the upward trend channel on ETH dominance. Uh, ETH just printed a bell on the one day. Interesting. Good. We'll look at that. Thanks. 
for that. Uh, right, Bollinger Bands. Okay, good. We're caught up. And uh, KS, okay, yes, maybe copy paste that for tomorrow's class uh, in Active Trader. All right. Uh, so moving along, let's jump over and look at ETH here. I'm in a different list. We'll look at ETH. We'll look at ETH dominance and see. All right. There's a lot to unpack here. Let me clean this up a bit. All right. So these scenarios, this has been invalidated. I thought maybe it would drop down into this buy zone. I was hopeful because I want to buy ETH. I'm itching to buy some ETH for long term. Wanted to buy it in this green zone of accumulation at a support level. Didn't doesn't look like we'll get it here. And was wrong on that. That happens. Uh ETH pushing higher though and trying to hold the 1870 kind of resistance level does look bullish though does look bullish so let's see what our indicators tell us i'll just make this bigger so you guys can see yeah we're getting a bell good good to notice thanks for sharing that so what do we have you guys the only thing missing is an eri a little bit, a little bit conflicting i haven't seen that before uh that i can recall this is unusual we have a bearish eri but everything else is bullish. Something's not right about this. I wouldn't try, I wouldn't be belonging this. We have three bearish ERIs. Now, so that you guys understand, the ERI is um, designed to sort of follow the footsteps of the elephants. And, and uh, I will explain what I'm talking about, but it's basically built on a sharp reversal. The ideal bullish ERI is to see this oscillator came down almost to zero and then pushed above the 20, pushed higher above the 20 line in three time periods. So one in two time periods. That's why it's a stronger signal. And um, and, and uh, there's more. There's a Keltner band. The midline is colored based on a Keltner band, which isn't shown. Don't worry about that. Sharp reversals indicate buying activity significant buying activity same with the bearish side so we had a bearish eri but not an ideal one if you go in the settings there's eris there's less ideal bull less ideal bear so this didn't get quite high enough but still bearish popped up in here bearish so those are signals of weakness but this one here is the strongest all the way up at 99 and in one looks like one or two trading even one trading period yesterday uh, that was sunday two days ago reverse this is hell heavy selling here heavy selling that's why it's darker red and so how's the volume now that was on low volume though weekend so there's this is like this is 3d chess guys i won't lie to you but uh not never would but these are things to keep in mind. Declining volume. Okay, so maybe not as strong. Now we're in the, the midweek. What are we seeing? We're seeing this, but it's it's rejecting here. So we have bearish. Okay, but still bullish TSI signal and bell. It, that's confusing. So essentially, in all my alerts, I had alerts set up in this range, and I even had it say buy, but we're selling off. So this is a, this is a bit tricky here. I'm going to wait. When in doubt, stay out. If at the end of today, this pushes and closes higher than 1885, though, I would be looking to buy. I would discount this bearish ERI because it was on low volume. But, you know, we don't want to discount it too much because, look, we've been up here for a while now. Huh. You know, I guess it's fair to say that because it was overbought for so long, and the selling pressure, the bulls grabbed it back again. That is a sign of strength. So we kind of need to see. Let's find out when that Shanghai goes live. I could spell today. Shanghai upgrade. April 12th. Yeah, so that's coming up, you guys. Could this be the sell on the news? 
um, you know, in the the I think it was the Guerlain. The, so the test net has been done, and so I don't know. And I I, I have not not to sound paranoid. But sometimes I do, but healthy degree, healthy underline has always served me well. So everyone was worried about. A lot of people were worried about the last merge, you know, the, the merge last year went fine. Everyone's like big nothing burger. So they let their guard down. The Shanghai upgrade, the Guerlain test net went fine. So everyone's guard is down. And is it possible something goes wrong? Um, quiet and everyone's just assuming. Every time there's consensus and, and people assume that always has me a little bit concerned, you know, <laughs> so be careful. Uh, I think uh, uh, we didn't get into the Binance CFTC lawsuit, but that's old news at this point, and it's been absorbed. Um, oh, here. OK, good. I was looking to see something like this. Should the Shanghai upgrade fail? An unlikely scenario. Hmm. Anybody bothered by that? An unlikely scenario. All right. Well, if I'm right, you guys have to give me credit for that. Anyway, given the diligence to track record of Ethereum core developers, SEC would have an even better case. Oh, huh. There's incentive for that to happen. I didn't know this, so I wasn't preloading the question. This, I'm glad we found out that we landed here. Um, I'm just rereading this so we don't loop, skim through it. It's okay. I think we've gotten the meat of it, though. Uh, so let's just say that again. Uh, let's see. Should the Shanghai upgrade fail? An unlikely scenario. Yeah, well, a lot of unlikely things have happened in the last couple of years. Given the diligence track record of Thelium's core developers, the SEC would have an even better case arguing on behalf of swarms of disgruntled stakers that the network failed to fulfill it's end of an investment bargain. Man, what if Ginsler's army, what if there's, you know, a whole basement full of uh, SEC hackers and I don't know. Now, now I'm putting double tin hat, double tin foil on the hat on my head. So forgive me. Unlikely though. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm probably wrong. I am probably wrong, but just in case, be careful. Uh, because weirder things have happened. It remains to be seen whether the SEC's appetite for crypto regulation, right? That's my point. Appetite for crypto regulation might have grown so large as to attempt to snuff out one of the linchpins of the entire blockchain ecosystem. So this just verbalized better than I could my spidey sense fears on this. Whereas April 12th, the date of the Shanghai implementation will remain a largely symbolic milestone within the crypto industry. Symbolism can often have much more tangible repercussions in the realm of politics. I said earlier this month in the active trader class that I that I have a feeling that I'll make prediction and predictions and it'll be wrong. So this may be it. And it wasn't like a strong feeling either way. So this is just uh, you know dubious speculation, as Ben Cowan says, just for fun. Uh, anyway, but always use stop loss for that particular specific reason. But um, anyway, moving on. Uh, let's see. I'll get back to the chart. Let's see. We have uh, heavy selling or low liquidity. Yeah, that's that's fair point, Brandon, as well. Yeah, it, it, and that's if I said heavy selling, it's low volume because that was Sunday. You always be suspect of price moves on a weekend because, and that's when most of the manipulation happens. It's low volume. The market makers, air quotes, which are sophisticated AI algorithms. Remember, 20 years ago, a computer beat the world-leading chess champion, Kasparov. 20 years ago. You were trading against the most sophisticated AI. You know, chat GPT is not, not anywhere near this. I mean, GPT-3, GPT-4 is out. Um, I, I can't say for, with certainty, but as far as trading, the, this is what you're up against. And so in terms of low volume, it's easier to manipulate price. I see it. I see it in the short-term timeframes. Day trading this stuff is a shit show. Pardon my French. 
especially with Bitcoin and especially after hours and especially on the weekends. See fake outs. I'm like, I'll put this chart away, but I see fake outs all the time. Liquidating traders uh, and manipulating emotion. Humans are easily misled. You know, especially if you're a super intelligence uh, and you can see where all of the liquidation levels are and you can see where all that. Let me, I will go back to this. Oh, bear with me. Bear with me here. This is ETH today. I'm going to show you something. And uh, which chart do I have it on? Yeah. Okay. Here. Order block detectors. There's much more sophisticated versions. You guys probably know this, like high block and uh, various ones. But these are the, um, the highest volume order blocks on the books, right? So the not only you know can the your competitor traders see these, but the algos know these areas. This is called liquidity. They, they, they don't talk about price. They're talking about liquidity. And if there's liquidity pocket, that's what they want. They being the AIs are programmed. Go grab liquidity. So down here, there are buying orders, people wanting to buy down here. So what could we expect? We could expect this or anticipate. We could anticipate this failing. Maybe this is a fake out. Comes down here, liquidates those longs, liquidates the longs, generates shorts. There's even more down in here. I don't think we go back below that necessarily, but um, but this is how this game is played. And down here are lots of buy orders. So that's a good support zone. What do we see on the upside? Resistance here on ETH right above 2,000. Lots of sell orders at 27.5 if we go to Bitcoin. So would it make sense that if you're the house in Vegas and you can see everyone's cards, that's why video poker is never, you know, if you win that video poker, you're in Vegas, take your money. Uh, you're not going to, it's, it's rare that you're going to walk away with anything. Same thing in trading, you guys. Same thing in trading. Look at all the sell orders right up here. 28, 29K. Double down, 29, 350. Hmm. So, you know, you might say, well, that's a good place to go short. This is also a likely fake out zone. So either it pushes up here and then rolls over. Or it pushes up here to 29.5 liquidates all these shorts does a fake out all these a lot of these go long does a pump and dump liquidates the longs and goes short again this is this kind of manipulation happens uh you know manipulation is a broad word uh and so it, it can mean many things and i'll sidebar for a moment uh let me zoom out so you can look at all that very interesting article. Article. Look it up online. Early in the early days, Arthur Hayes, very smart guy, billionaire, started BitMEX, but was accused of making most of their profits targeting their customers' liquidation levels. Never proven. Why? Company out of Seychelles, uh, you know, you know, somewhere else. No regulation. Bybit is another one. Big owners of Bybit or Tencent, major Chinese corporation. Do you, I'm not going to say it. There are, are hedge funds that brag about creating AIs, quote, that'll generate superior returns for our customers. Who are their customers? Hedge funds and exchanges. What does that mean? Their superior returns are your losses read something recently about BitGet as well. So I, I don't fault the SEC for wanting to regulate and kill off these overseas margin trading platforms because they're rigged. I've seen it. I've experienced it. So anyway, I, I only say that for your protection. Be careful and, and don't read everything at face value. The old days of a breakout, uh, especially in crypto, is, uh, you know, the algos know that when when this happened, when you know it's a lot of if then if this happens and all these dumb humans go in and go long, so if then if if this then that. So we want to make sure that we're catching uh, legitimate trends, if possible. Sorry for the rabbit hole. Okay, uh, question is: Is Ethereum as a blockchain too big to fail? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, yes, good question. I mean, 
Well, because it's decentralized, I think so. And that's kind of the central argument, pardon the pun, but the central argument for crypto and Bitcoin is decentralized. The banks, centralized. That's why Bitcoin pumped when uh, the big banks kind of went down. A, whales and rich people were saying, I'm not leaving my money in this. Are you crazy? Put it over in Bitcoin. All right. Uh, so we are coming up on the hour here. Let's go to uh, ETH dominance here. Uh, okay. Well, this definitely a pump, but it may be too late. Well, let's see before I speak. Uh, now, here's the thing. The, the signals that we use, just make sure you understand, they operate best on the underlying. So using them on ETH dominance or a leveraged product is not how they're designed. Nevertheless, we have double ERIs. They are indications of investor sentiment nonetheless. So the ERI is significant. TSI turning up, signal, key, interesting. And just the, the, the fake out, again, just always have the back of your mind. If you were a, a super intelligent cyborg after the singularity, let's say you have the best chip put in your brain and uh, do you, <laughs> yeah, today's the, the class of uh, uh, conspiracy theories here. What am I doing? Turn off the Bollinger Band. I'm trying to clean this up for you guys. Okay, so just to zoom out, uh, and I guess that's good. Disregard the uh, moving averages, but you see this. We've been watching this. This Chevron for ETH dominance came down, 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 then went up. Um, but um, it's it's breaking here, so it's got to hold the line there. You know, I hesitate to widen this. It's it's breaking out of this. So ETH dominance is in question. So when in doubt, zoom out. When in doubt, stay out. When in doubt, zoom out. So um, this is my concern. Okay. Downtrending. So, um, you know. USDT dominance, well, okay, let's take a look at this. USDT has just been, so do we have another white gray swan event coming where it pushes everyone in back into stablecoin? Let's take a look at the Dixies. What's going on in the DXY? Uh, well, let's see, I have a chart for that. Um, so a Dixie's looking like it pulls back into rally zone. Nice topping tail on that, uh, pulling back down. That's a um, dollar weakening. Bearish, almost bearish engulfing, is it? I think not quite. Pretty close. Close enough. So if we see the DXY pull back, we should see a rally from, from crypto here. Okay, well, that's interesting. Mixed signals, you guys. Mixed signals. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, I think it's about we we didn't look at the uh, the fast movers here, and I apologize. Let me just see. We can pull up the scanner. Do you guys want to look at anything? Uh, KS says if SEC goes after Buter and then takes him down, uh, I'm just pausing. Why why would they do that? They do think Ethereum's a security, but um, uh, how will that uh, affect the standing of Ethereum blockchain ecosystem? These are all good questions, even though it's decentralized. And again, the air what ifs and speculation, precisely the advantage of Bitcoin when the leader is dead and the chain is able to stay alive without its leader. Let's see, what are you saying here? You're talking about Ethereum and, and, and Vitalik. Precisely the advantage of Bitcoin, so Bitcoin advantage over Ethereum. And then you're saying when the leader is dead and the chain is able to stay alive without the leader. Who's the leader, though? Oh, you mean... Ethereum or Bitcoin? I'll say maybe I'm missing something. It's probably safer long term and no single figurehead for. I think you're referring to Bitcoin and no leader. Uh, you know, well Satoshi, which is not a real person. Uh, probably safer long term, no single figurehead regulators go after. Okay, so you're talking about Bitcoin as the leader, and uh, because there's no one to go after. Yeah, I mean, certainly, um, if they went after Vitalik and throw him in jail or something i, I you know the eth would would survive I, mean, I don't know that he he's you know he's the symbolic leader but uh it's uh, it certainly would spook everybody because who's going to make the decisions 
but that's all on the blockchain and and um i guess i'm not really sure like who runs that company is it his call they have all the the people running the nodes have some say and i imagine there's some kind of a uh, uh what do you call it um contingency plan if that happens sorry i'm having ocd about my my uh incredibly ugly arrow pointer head there better all right so um with that you guys we're sort of at the end of class this is a one hour class uh, we definitely go deeper in this in the uh, moonstream classes at m3 active trader tomorrow what i may do just as a what we just sometimes do on this crypto screener here you guys is see what is moving and looking good uh i've got my own watch list so um here's one guys let's look at rune oops rune looking strong uh has a new bell i wish we had an er the eri was all the way back here but that's okay we're back above the 21 and 50 and actually we, we still you know back to our checklist let's use that checklist here so eri sort of this is far enough back it doesn't really count tsi going green signal and bell uh rune is one to watch you guys okay we can continue with our checklist and pretend it was for rune and back above the 50 not quite a rocket this one was kind of this was almost a rocket not textbook if you guys aren't so the rocket is let me scroll down here what we have let's just say rune is what we were watching bullish engulfing no but candle body at support yes is price above the 21 and 50 day ema yes it's right on the 50 is price above support trend line uh yes so you know look we have a nice little trend line going there which it bounced off of so like that and uh is price breaking above trend line resistance um that is let me just see here i don't have yeah i mean it's breaking out there so yes that's a good bullish site uh bullish um signal rather is volatility index above the 20 level uh, you don't use fall index so much on the daily but we can this is just educational purposes just so you guys know how to use all this and where's my ball index there boom yeah it is above the 20 so it's out of this gray zone this would have been the ideal time to buy back in this uh, vol, vol index is, is very good it's we don't use it as much i'm gonna turn it off because it makes candles look funny that's true so we have a nine out of 19 on our trading score what else is there a rocket candle informing at support there was yesterday let's just say this is a rocket it's not quite if it closes toward the end of the top of the trading range at the end of the day then it would be so keep an eye on rune i'm going to set an alert here right at that dollar oops push the wrong button again trigger happy there and add alert let's say a dollar 55 would be close enough crossing up that would be my alert that we have potential rocket forming actually no i got that wrong i want to see it closer to the top of that range and why did i draw it specifically there because looking left okay so we have some some resistance here not terribly strong but support 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 hitting a little resistance but a break above that even better a dollar 60 means breaking above resistance and that would be another checklist so that's why I want you guys should be using these trader checklists so let's just say the yes there so the higher the score on these that's why I created this are there multiple green ERI signals the higher the score the better the more likelihood it goes up multiple ERIs no we don't are there higher lows on the oscillator we're getting a little more advanced doesn't really apply there let's just keep on going here and then we've got uh red no that would be the bearish scenario so multiple signals decreasing overhead resistance um uh, yes there is so that would be but no uh, so there's these are some of the negative ones so I should have it if you check these it's a negative but you'll have to use it with your own judgment some are bullish some are bearish all right and then the radar let's look at the radar we don't have the radar on for some reason mixed signals so we wouldn't check that at any rate so for for this example 
what do we have? Regardless, we have a score of 10 out of 19. That's very good. Not, not financial advice, do your own research. Uh, generally, I will do enter a trade just on the top four. Four out of 20, more is better. So, yeah, KS uh, for sure. I mean, I, Rune is one to keep a close eye on, I would uh, suggest. And follow your indicators and see if we break above and close above $1.57. What else could we do? Let's just, let's do this. Let's look at our weekly. Ah. Ah, we've got a weekly rocket, you guys, on trend line support. Um, even if we draw it on the real body of the candle. It uh, doesn't want it there. Okay, here's the clincher. Anybody thinking what I'm thinking? The uh, I want to clean this up. What is this up here that I have? Well, uh, all right, we'll get, we'll get to that and maybe redraw it because that's uh, so. What I'm here, here's what I want to get to. Let's look at the weekly crypto mastery indicators. Weekly indicates now we're talking, you guys, the longer term trend. This is where you see the accumulation on the bigger scale on the weekly. So, and, and look at this, I had drawn this overhead arrow two months ago well, how many weeks four weeks eight weeks 12 weeks i was drawing this overhead on rune which did it came down it's finding support breaking above the trend line resistance a bullish eri on the weekly we have a rocket on the weekly we have a trend strength indicator oh my look at that Watch this one. When that confirms Sunday, set your alert Sunday. If that's green and crossing over, then we have ERI TSI on the weekly. Uh, where's my signal? What did I do with it? Is that, is that uh, broken? Huh. Signal line is not showing up. Let me refresh my chart. Uh, let me cancel. Save. Reload. Maybe resource issue. Okay, I'm trying to think. Um, my signal indicate. I don't, I'm going to. Well, it doesn't matter. I, I'm mostly I'm mostly looking at the ERI TSI anyway. Oh, wait, here it is. What's going on? Things all the way. All right. So the signal line is green and has been for a while now, and that's interesting. Okay. So the only other thing is that I think this is a very bullish setup. And what this was, which we drew back over here as a possible buy setup, for Rune to get back to its old high, this is why it's worth watching. This was our Moonstream pick, by the way, I believe. I'd have to check, but um, uh, it's a prior Moonstream pick for sure. But, but these are the coins you want to be watching, in, in my opinion that have the highest percentage potential back to their old high in quality projects. So I had it drawn from here as a possible 10X if it gets back to its old highs. Let me just double check that. We'll pull it in a little bit for conservative. So, but we can drag it down a bit now. So this is why Rune is exciting because just to get back to its old highs, you know, to add to your hodl bag, where's the corner on this thing? Where I'm here, yeah, it's an 1100%. That's 11x from here. So potentially, if you put a trade on right here and you kept a tight stop loss even there and you drag this up, you know, there, there's multiple take profit zones along the way, but just in, in terms of taking this trade as a hodl, uh, that would be a 100 to 1 ROI. Okay. Now, what I would suggest, and this is something we talk about in the uh, Active Trader more, we won't have time to do it now, but where would you set take profit zones along the way up? Well, here's the Fibonacci. You know, there's uh, multiple levels in here. 
we could identify, I think certainly getting up in this range, 8.71 would be a reasonable golden pocket bounce. There's going to be multiple levels in here, uh, but you can use something or three commas uh, to identify multiple take profit zones. That's the prudent way to do it. But um, it, overall, rather than look at lots of different setups, I think Rune is one to really keep an eye on. Uh, okay, it says inverse head and shoulders, cup and handle. I don't see cup and handle. It's not really the handle's too deep. Inverse head and shoulders. I don't see it. It's uh, it's I see a breakout of a trend channel. And um, sorry, you guys, there's a siren outside. But uh, yeah, look at that. Isn't it interesting there how it bounced right up to the golden pocket. Did it? No, I'm sorry. That's a really loud siren. Hopefully you guys are going to hear that. The uh, Just putting a fib on this to there. No, didn't even get to the 50%, but it could be on its way. I'll leave this golden pocket bounce. So next next profit target, I'd say around $2.30. But um, no, I don't see head and shoulders. I, I think it's trying to break up higher. So uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, let's see, is Rune based on ETH token? So if it breaks above $1.50, would it be possible if ETH breaks $18.75? Um, you know what? Yes, but I, I don't care really. I'm, you know, here's why the candles, here's why the chart tells the whole story. People way smarter than me and you and, the floors of quants that they have are telling us this is getting bought up. How's the volume? Mm. Volume is suspicious, though. You'd rather see a big move with high volume. But it's not always uh, indicative. Because sometimes the volume indicates the moves already happened, right, in this case. So... I don't know. I, that's why I, the, the rocket, though, look, we know you guys, this is uh, something that it's more of an active trader signal. But uh, that to me, if this closes at or above here on the weekly, it's going to it's going to take off, in my opinion. But we've got a couple of, we've got half a week to go. Anything could happen, right? This could easily roll over. So anyway, keep an eye on your indicators. That's what I'm seeing there. And does anything else jump out? I'll just kind of skim through, but it's up 5%. It's showing strength. Uh, one coin, that's a cup and handle right there for you. If you're looking for a cup and handle, just be careful if everything, you, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Have you heard that? But that's a nice little cup and handle there, textbook. Um, you know, everything else is kind of weak. I'm just looking at percentage gainers, CRVs looking kind of strong, unusual push higher indicators aren't looking great yet but um but that's why we do the news sort of overall market uncertainty uh not that it's ever certain but now let's see skimming through is there anything else you guys want to look at i am skimming and looking and not seeing a whole lot probably need to update my lists here at some point so i'll jump back to eth Probably uh, ETH, ETH is sort of having trouble. It's hitting resistance up here. So I would wait for ETH to come back to the 21 day. But here's the thing. It's gearing up for a breakout. I mean, this is an ascending triangle. And typically these will break out to the upside. Uh, what we want to see is a break and close. But it's okay to wait because usually it'll come back and retest. So, you know, you don't want to wait too long necessarily. This is where you'd start easing into the position based on the indicators. It's just this bearish ERI has given me uh, some concern, even though uh, even though we have a bell. It's uh, something about it just gives me the willies. All right. Anything else, you guys? All right. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, join us tomorrow for... Active Trader, if you are not yet in Moonstream Active Trader, you can find more at moonstream.io slash M3. I think I had that up on the screen somewhere where we will go into the overall longer term charts, the monthlies, the weeklies. This is all very messy because I haven't cleaned it up yet. But, um, you know, crypto mastery indicators are showing and have been showing that the bottom is in. I have a cleaner chart here. Did I miss anything on the news? 
of course, imminent resistance break. Some people saying we break higher. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, what I'm showing you here, though, is just to close things out, again, our indicators are so good because it's called the last four market bottoms. ERI, 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 and then confirming with the TSI, 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 and we are confirming this, you guys, on the monthly basis, TSI breaking above 20. This thing's going higher in this month. It's just a matter of, do we pull back a little bit, which I'm, I'm hoping for in the short term, and uh, and then blast off to 48K, 50K. We'll cover that tomorrow. And the signal line about to cross. Signal about to go green. Not quite yet. Probably, you know, does it happen in April or May? That's why I think April's kind of like quiet. I think May, June, we really start to see that explode. I think we hit, I think we really start to explode in by June, toward end of June, maybe. And I show in tomorrow's class why we could hit. I have a scenario where we could hit 100,000 Bitcoin by June, July, end of June, July, which would be possible potentially with the hyperinflation and the rapid uh, de-dollarization <clears throat> and everyone pushing money out, taking money out of the banks, out of dollars into Bitcoin. It can happen, you guys. We've seen that. I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying it can. So we'll talk about that tomorrow and also look at XRP, what's going on there. All right, you guys. Thanks, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed the class. And this will be up on the... Uh, youtube's channel there if you'd like to review it please go like and subscribe kind of get trying to get more subscribers there if you're watching on youtube and a replay uh please do join us there and if you'd like more information about these indicators that we're using if you're watching this just go to crypto mastery dot online that will redirect you somewhere else but that's just easier to remember and we have a uh, special there on this for the next three days on these amazing indicators that we've just shown you. By far the best I've ever used. I've been trading 20 years. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll talk to some of you tomorrow. And uh, for the rest of you, see you again next week. Take care.